scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 18 to 21. Ephesians, watch this now. The Bible says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Please, let's shout verse 19 together. Ready? One, to go. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power? In fact, you can stop there. One of the ways we know God is to study his power. Come and manifest your power. Dideo, dideo. Hey, oh God of signs and wonders. Savior, Redeemer. Come and manifest your power. Dideo. Oh God of signs and wonders. Savior, Redeemer. Come and manifest your power. Come and manifest your power. Come and show forth your power. Elijah said, let the God that answers by fire, let him be the God. Even if you do not know his name, wait for his power. Come and manifest your power. Dideo, dideo. Listen, in construction, we have very major construction companies. And there are times you can know a block that was made by, you know, just some well-meaning person and one that was made by a serious construction company. And sometimes when you see certain blocks, they are almost casted like concrete. They pour them down and yet they don't break. Before you see to verify what company, you just know that whatever this company is, it has to be a solid company to have produced this. You can use the works of God to verify that he is there. So when Moses went to Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, he said, thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, that is not a name. Let my people know. They healed. Beelzebub did certain things. But there are certain things Satan cannot do. When you know the extent. This is Paul's prayer. That you understand the extent of his power. So every time you say God like Lazarus. If you were here our brother would not have died. But she said even now. Someone prophesied. Even now. Ah, God, you didn't do it last year because in his economy, there is no such thing as delay. He can come, he can ah. come and manifest your power. Dideo. Come and manifest your power. Come and manifest your power. Oh, God of signs and wonders. Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Dideo. One more time, oh God. Oh 
of signs and wonders. Savior, come and manifest your power. I truly believe that there are people here that what God will begin to do in your life. There are people who had no names in the Bible, but they were described by the spectacular manifestations of the hand of God upon their life. Are we together? Who was born blind? I mean, why was this man? Who seen that this man was born blind? Him or his father? Jesus said, that's not the issue. Now is an opportunity for the glory of God to be made manifest. The first miracle recorded in scripture, according to John's synoptic account, is found in John chapter 2. Hallelujah. The wedding in Cana of Galilee. By the time we get to verse 5, the Bible says, Mary called the people and said, whatsoever he tells you to do, do. Then we get to verse 10. Give us verse 10. The Bible says, this beginning of miracles. Verse, okay, 11 now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Galilee, Cana of Galilee, and manifested his glory, and the disciples believed on him. This beginning, he didn't stop there. Then by the time we go to John chapter 20 and verse 30, give it to us please. John chapter 2 begins the miracles. John chapter 20 and verse 30 and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book 31. He says but these are written that ye might believe. You can believe in Jesus by seeing a demonstration of his power. Anytime people say, where is your God? Don't answer them. Let your results answer. Your results are better speakers. Come and manifest your power. Dideo, dideo. Manifest your power. You manifest your power. Can I tell you, a cry to see the power of God in your life is a valid cry. Ask the psalmist, oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul longs after you as in a dry and a weary land. He said to see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. I shouldn't just see your power in church alone. I need to import that reality to my home, to my business, to my health. chapter 4 and verse 33 please give it to us and with great power the bible says gave the apostles witness acts 4 33 of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon how many all not preachers all not just businessmen all it takes great power acts chapter 10 and verse 38 Peter was speaking in the house of Cornelius. He said, how God and Jesus of Nazareth, he was the word incarnate, but he still needed power with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about. Don't go about with just compassion. You'll be disappointed. You need to have beyond compassion. Power. Ministry without power, you will be offended, exhausted, frustrated until you give up I assure you it's not an insult it's a description it's the, it's, the, it's the name given to the decline that happens until you lose strength it says if you turn aside in the day of battle it never talked about your heart condition it is simply because your strength is small we need power power in all its ramifications supernatural power Take it high for me, please. Let me prophesy upon someone. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. on me the holy ghost power rest on me let your power 
for signs and wonders rest on me rest on me let your power for signs and wonders rest on me rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me holy ghost power rest on me thou shall remember the lord thy god for it is he that giveth thee power 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 tarry in jerusalem until ye be endued with power And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran. He ran. We don't run just by intention. It is based on what comes upon us. That's what drives you to run. Power from on high. Power from on high. Power from on high. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in all your ways. It is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies will submit themselves to you. It says, Our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Please listen to me. When you call God El Shaddai, it is a revelation that many people do not understand. The literal translation is the multi-breasted one. It's not a very accurate translation, but it's an attempt to describe the extent of sufficiency. Hallelujah. The multi-breasted one. That means there is no limitation to his ability to supply. Are we together now? When a woman gives birth to triplets or quadruplets, two have to be patient if she's breastfeeding them. Not because she's wicked, she's limited. So when the Bible calls him El Shaddai, that means within his economy, one person does not have to suffer because another person is experiencing him. Shaddai. That means God can lift everyone at the same time. One person's rising does not affect another because it is El Shaddai. Are you listening now? Please, I want you to hear this. If you press to know God, his character, and then you get to understand his power, just these two dimensions alone will turn your life around. Reverend Sam is able to do what he is doing today because he has encountered these dimensions. When I sat down and I was seeing the testimonies yesterday, you know, people, not everybody is faking this thing. Oh, listen carefully to me. There are people who really love God and don't get used to, and just feel that every time you see people, miracles and all of that. No, not at all. I want you to believe this. There are people who fear God. There are people who have seen his face. Among the many things that they received is his power. Hallelujah. Yes. There are preachers here listening online across the nations. Can I tell you, our generation is not in ignorance of sermons. We have done well. We need to import authentic, genuine Holy Ghost power that is put on display, dumbfounding critics, principalities, and powers. I pray that in my lifetime, there will be an emergence of a generation that will be demonstrators of genuine, superior, spiritual power, verifiable by science. Hallelujah. There are certain miracles in the Bible that were called notable miracles. Notable miracles. That you speak over someone and program a climate of favor over him and tell him go. And he returns wondering, rejoicing. And then you can tell science there is a dimension beyond the Y, the X. There is a dimension beyond mathematics. They are all an attempt to describe a realm beyond the third dimensional realm. Are we together now? Do you believe that will happen? 
through you that I may know him hmm. this was a prayer of the apostle that I may know him my goodness that I may know him that I may know him I just saw light on a gentleman just one gentleman this is what I saw I'm in the spirit We'll find a place to wrap up today by tomorrow I will show you the other angle I'm still seeing this light again there is a gentleman help him please I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus Lifted up, exalted, I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Remember the assignment I've given you. I want you to go back and study Psalm 103. Study, use it tonight before you return tomorrow. Study it and destroy those negative lies the devil has told you about God. Are we together? The Lord is gracious, full of compassion, rich in mercy and love. The Lord is almighty. Now you study his power, the extent of his power the extent of his power then you will see how small your situation is then you will believe that it is not a scam if God gives you a house tomorrow then you will believe he's not endorsing carelessness it's a system of advantage the implication of his nature that God can turn Samaria overnight to become Beulah and Hephzibah Listen, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Let's be careful. In, in a bid to teach people things like the law of process and to help people grow, let's not downplay and insult God by doubting every possibility that God can bring that is beyond the scope of man. I don't endorse laziness and carelessness, but it is a joke to believe. If you don't believe God and you are afraid, grow. But don't stop other people from who told you God cannot bless you overnight. Listen, he will not do that to honor your carelessness. But there is a system of advantage captured in his dealing with men. And where the need arises according to your understanding, he is able to bring you into that reality. The prophet said by this time tomorrow. It is true. Listen. If some of us were to follow the normal course of growth, we would not be one-tenth where God has placed us by grace. Did you hear what I said? So I'm saying this so that as I speak over your life, it is not a license for carelessness. It is not a license for lack of diligence. These are all together the systems in the kingdom. But there is an advantage that the believer has. Don't waste the presence of the Holy Spirit. Don't waste the supremacy of the word. Don't insult the mercy and the love and the grace of God. What then is the advantage of these things? The Bible says, wherefore are given to us exceeding great and precious promises. Listen, that by them we might be the partakers in experience of his divine nature. Haven't escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. God is not a fraudster that will allow people carelessly just prosper like that without engaging the principles of prosperity and growth. But you will be joking to believe that God does not assist men. Ebenezer, 
El Shaddai, Jireh, come on. Rewarder, in fact. That he that cometh to God must come believing that he is, then that he is the rewarder of them, not all, of them, not all. So don't be offended if you don't get it. He never said he's the rewarder of all. He said he's the rewarder of them. If you don't get it, you have not subscribed to be part of the them. Among the very them that receive are them that diligently seek him. Serving God pays. Did you hear what I said? Loving God pays. Pouring your all for him. Except you are faking it somewhere. I tell you, when you pour your all with reckless abandonment, if he's the God of the Bible, in your lifetime, he will console you. Remember, you are not serving him for things. You are serving him because you love him. However, he has vowed that you would not serve him and he will leave you in shame. It is true. There are many believers today who are in a position that has discouraged other believers because we do not find the faithfulness of God captured in their lives. Unfortunately, you are the only Bible that many people have to read. They have to read. And you have been showing negative verses through your life. People have used your life as a canvas to paint God. And the God that your life has helped them paint is not the one that died for us. There is a kind of Jesus we are selling to the nations that they will not receive. No. Are we together? If God is love, it must be demonstrated. He that did not spare his son, but that he offered him freely. How much more? This is God we are talking about. And I'm not just talking about things. You want to thrive? You want to excel supernaturally? You must know the God who stands by you like a mighty terrible one. You will not be able to believe God if you are still doubting who he is. Are we together now? Again, in my example, if I tell you come and collect one million tomorrow, the first thing is you will verify. Am I that sincere, number one? Then do I have that amount? If you verify that I'm sincere, I can't be joking with you. Then you now verify, do you think you can have one million to give me? It is Those are the, the examinations that build your confidence. The woman said to herself, there are things she said to herself. I know he's mighty. If I may but touch the hem of his garment. Hmm. Listen, I'm wrapping up. Please, I want you to look at me. You see, with all humility, I will tell you, this book you see is not a novel for me. It's not a newspaper. By the spirit of grace, I have searched and I have found that God can be trusted. I have searched and I have found that God can be trusted. Nigeria was not founded when this Bible, when God walked here. So Nigeria's condition, as much as we still trust God to continue bringing us to a safe heaven, you can define your realities. It is written is greater than what you are seeing. It is written is greater than what you are hearing. It is written is greater than what you are feeling. And the Bible says, let God be true. And all men, let God be true over my finances. Let God be true over my health. Let God be true. This man who is standing before you, I know what it means to rise from grass to grace. You are not hearing cunningly devised fables. Our lives are epistles of the faithfulness of God. I'm encouraging someone before I speak to you. I want you to take the time to know God. Find out why you are disbelieving him. Find out why you believe someone in National Assembly more than God. Find out why you believe a senator more than God. Not, not to insult them. Find out why you believe a preacher more than God. It's deficiency of an encounter. When God speaks, can you believe him? When God shows you things, can you agree with him? For instance, when he tells you that this year when men say there is a casting down, 
for you you shall say is it a memory verse or it is a revelation coming from a God who has integrity the word integrity comes from the word integer void of falsehood same within as without hallelujah there is nothing God tells me that I will not believe him but it's not just mental assent no you can be saying I believe whereas you are lying first to yourself and then those who hear you I believe it's supposed to be a resultant effect of an encounter there is something about him I have found God cannot lie listen the Bible does not say does not lie the word cannot means everything he says becomes so if God says you are great for as long as you heard it it has gone forth and that word only returns when you become only limited by your refusing it because he gave you a will and he will respect it if you refuse hallelujah there are people here the things you have seen from scripture and from your visions they all attest to the fact that God is ready to do great things with you and your children but you can argue it away and allow unbelief overwhelm you and allow scientific Christianity to downplay the integrity and, and insult God's power and act like the one upon whom the king leaned on and said even if God will open the heavens might these things be mm. when Gabriel came before Zechariah and he doubted him he said I am Gabriel that stands before the presence of God will I leave such a presence with falsehood what is an indictment on the one that sent me not just me I bring you a message from the throne and you are doubting I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God if I carry falsehood won't his presence vet me this is what he was telling Zechariah and for that a very strange scripture it was not the Holy Spirit that shut his mouth from speaking Gabriel and Zechariah as a priest in his office priests were immune by reason of their office but for disbelieving God his mouth was shut until the day he agreed with God in writing John and no prayer his mouth opened could it be that there are certain things that have been shot not by the devil God is, is shutting it so that you don't use your mouth and your hands to damage something God is doing the day you now agree there are things that will open on their own like today you can agree with God I believe you you have said I'm a man of God a great one I believe you you have said I'm a Deborah to my generation God I do not even have the eloquence of speech but one thing I know and I believe is that God is not a man that he should lie. You have told me I will carry the sounds of worship to the ends of the earth. This is for someone. I believe you. You have said I am Esther. Even though coming from Shushan, my destiny is to sit with Ahasuerus. I believe you. I may not see the wind. I may not see rain. Yet my valley shall be filled. Not because of the weather, but the one who controls the weather. Go ahead in one minute and begin to declare, Lord, I believe you. I believe you. Take this moment to cause unbelief from your life. We work valiant upon the strength of our encounters. But the people that do know their God in career, do know their God concerning their health, do know their God concerning their days, do know their God as touching victory over demons and principalities and powers. Do know their God concerning finances. Do know their God as touching ministry. The Bible says they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Someone go ahead and pray. You are a God of love. You are a God of grace. You are a God of mercy. You are a God of judgment. You are a God of compassion, great and mighty, powerful and awesome, powerful indeed and awesome, all powerful. Take a minute to pray. Shake away unbelief from your life.
listen to me. Please hear me. When you know who God is, you will believe everything he tells you. When you know who God is, you will be able to distinguish between his voice and the voice of doubt, the voice of fear, the voice of your past, the voice of yesterday. There is, as it were, many voices. And the apostle says, none of them is without signification. This moment as I speak to you, Satan is also attempting to speak to you. 2023 is still speaking to you too. Wanting to bring his jealousy into 2024. To repeat your pain again. To repeat your misery again. Yesterday is very jealous. It seeks to reproduce itself into your today. It takes you holding the shield of to grace. Keep your beautiful hands lifted. Lifted. Father, thank you so much for these ones. Your word declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. These ones have come sincerely with their hearts opened. And based on the authority of your word and upon their confession of faith, I declare their sins forgiven. In the name of Jesus, I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. And I decree and declare that today you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I impart upon you the grace to live a victorious Christian life. And I declare that you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Now, please, all of you in front, may I request your counselors waving their hands. I would want you to please move to my left. That will be your right. You will have a word with the counselors just for a moment, a minute, and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. Hallelujah. Now, I heard Reverend Sam talking about the prayer request. Is it all right if I just lend my voice on that? Please, um, for those, when we ask people to bring prayer requests, it is because it's a very valid and powerful and potent principle. Number one, it helps you coordinate your faith and your expectation. Because the Bible says in Philippians 4 and verse 6, it says to be anxious for nothing. Then it says, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. It says, let your request be made known unto God. Are we together? So when we ask people to bring their request, it's not a ritual. No, we are praying together. But number one, to prepare that, you have to meditate. There are many people who don't even know what they want. And so sometimes you take the time to write. And then it is a way of involving your faith in the process. And then... It is the most accurate representation of your desires. If we prophesy, we see impact. But when you write it by yourself, another way, another thing that, that uh, prayer requests do as far as that help is you can collect the request of another. Your family member, someone online, the farthest part of the earth, they can give it to you. You can print it and bring it. It doesn't have to be yours alone, your own request. You can collect that of another and then bring it tomorrow, somewhere in the course of the service. Okay, I see people already with it. Can I announce that they bring theirs now? Okay, so in, if you have yours now, you can do well. Maybe ushers, just help us wave your hands or wave it. And then, please ushers, can you look out for those who have that so that you bring it. And um, I'm sure that tomorrow we'll have the time to be able to speak over it in the name of Jesus. So we're looking at the laws of exploits. This is part one. By the grace of God, we'll look at part two tomorrow. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. May your evening and your morning be blessed. Have visions and encounters that lead to your victory. May your love for Jesus grow and work stronger and stronger. You are blessed. You remain blessed in Jesus' name. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you